Well, hello, God bless you today. This is Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. And it's that time of the, of the week and of the day again where I get to come to you and to invite you to join me right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. Yes. <laughs> you know, I get a kick out of that. Uh, and I guess the, the idea behind it is uh, I want the members of the church and my audience to be excited about studying the Bible. You know, we can get excited about uh, uh, great singers coming, great artists coming and having big revivals and different things going on in our churches. And I'm not saying that those things aren't calls for excitement because they are and they are necessary. But I tell you, I want the audience that God has given me and the people that I pastor to always be excited about studying the Bible. Walking in the word of God, seeking God, learning the Bible. Um, you know, one of my concerns even today uh, about the shifting in quick, quick, quick church, uh, brief church, fast church, fast preaching. Uh, you got to get them out. You got to get them out. You got to get them out. I pray that the pastors who are making, getting people out of church, their top priority. I hope you're giving some thought to whether you are preparing them to deal with the issues that they face every day. Because Satan is after our members. Satan is after our seniors. Satan is really after our adults. I'm going to show you to, tonight uh, a graph showing how, uh, listen, they're making tremendous gain with the Gen, the Gen Xers. Oh, they are, they are changing their minds. And I believe that one of the reasons that the enemy is making such gains is that our kids, and especially those who are in the public school system, which accounts for uh, at least 75% of uh, young people. I know that's to be true in our state, state of North Carolina. They're not hearing the other side of arguments. They're not hearing the other discussions. They're not hearing what God has to say about these things. And they are being exposed to wickedness. They're being exposed to lasciviousness. They're being exposed to evil, ungodly lifestyles. And they are being exposed to these things by the very people who are authority figures. No, uh, no, uh, no one less, none other than their own teachers and administrators and those who are in positions of authority, those who's got who got to test them and determine whether or not they even graduate to the next grade. So, my friends, if, if they're uh, uh, if on the other hand, they're attending church, that's five minute church, three minute church, two minute church. And then in the five minutes uh, uh, church, three of the five is given to singing. And you got to have a certain amount given to play and entertainment and socially socializing. Then how much time is given to the word of God? Let me tell you something. Satan is after your mind, but I'm not going to lie to you. So am I. So is God. And let me tell you, you want the God of the Bible to be in your mind, on your mind, saturating your mind and speaking to your mind. Because when your mind is saturated with the things of God and when your mind is being comforted by the God of the Bible, let me tell you what the results are. The result, the result is that you will have perfect peace. The Bible says, Isaiah 26 and verse 3, thou shalt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. That is, uh, God will keep the mind of people who are dependent on him in perfect peace. I want to maintain, I want to have a God dependent mind so that my mind will not crack. Jesus foresaw these days, these times that we're living in now. Have you noticed that the, the government, the powers that be have not yet released the manifesto of the killer who shot and killed th six people at the Christian uh, school there in Nashville, Tennessee. We've moved on from them. Little children were killed. Uh, uh, the adults were killed. They were murdered by a person who is strung out. Uh, a transgender, and if you notice, 
on the day that the kids are, are killed and, and the teachers are killed, the next day we have a, a transgender recognition day, transgender visibility day. Is America sending the signal that it's all right to kill Christians? Is America sending the signal that we don't get all up uh, in an uproar and all outraged if it is a member of a protected class and if they then walk on the campus of what seemed to be the pick on them class, make fun of them class, silence them class. And I'm talking about the way Christians are being treated today. But thank God there's a word from the Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ foresaw these days. And Jesus said to the believers, if the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hate you. Well, there is a way for the believer to deal with the hatred of the world. Isn't it amazing that we're seeing hatred toward Christians being messaged to people by describing the Christians as the ones who are peddling the hate. And what we're actually doing is we're telling the truth. And and today, when you tell the truth and the truth doesn't fit the world's narrative, then the truth is called hate. And uh, based on uh, the way they're beginning to treat people, it's all right to vandalize churches. No one is being charged. No jail time. It's all right to vandalize uh, uh, mosques, synagogues, different houses of worship, and no one is being uh, sent to jail. But you go down to an abortion clinic and 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 step one foot uh, into the zone, the, that little slither of, of, of land where you are allowed to stand. If you, you, all of a sudden here come police cars, here come, here, here they come looking to arrest someone. People are being taken to jail. People are being charged. Uh, Christians. There is evidence that uh, Catholic churches have been infiltrated by the government. Or oh, what are we seeing here? Is this still America? Well, with all these things that are going on, and I'm going to wrap this up. But with all these things that are going on, God said, if you keep your mind stayed on me, if you develop a God dependent mind. And by the way, I'm talking about the God of the Bible. The God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you keep your mind stayed on him, regardless to all these things that's going on, he promised to give you perfect peace. And Brother Gary, you can't be perfect. Perfect, you can't get any more peaceful than a perfect peace live peaceful mind where you're not having to be drugged, where you're not having to take tranquilizers, where you're not having to do any of these things. So join me here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ as we delve into the Word of God as we continue to allow God to give us a God-dependent mind through Bible study. Yes, Bible study. Tonight, we're going to study the scriptures together. I'll see you here. God bless.